Ethiopia has just switched to generating power from the contentious Renaissance Dam. The Ethiopian government acknowledged that the Renaissance project will be one of the biggest hydroelectric dams in Africa when it's finished in 2023. But what will distinguish it as one of Africa's largest dams? What exactly does it offer, or how unique is it? First of all, note that nearly $5 billion, 7% of Ethiopia's 2016 GNP, is projected to be spent on the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. And by the way, 10 375-megawatt Francis turbine generator sets will be installed in the power plant on the right bank, while six turbine generators with comparable capacities will be installed in the power plant on the left bank. Water flowing through a penstock with an 8-meter diameter and a 180-meter length will power each turbine. And here's the interesting part. The Grand Renaissance Hydroelectric Power Project's main dam will be 1,780 meters long, and a 155-meter-high gravity dam made of roller-compacted concrete, which will result in a reservoir with a potential surface area of 1,680 kilometers squared. The project's river diversion system consists of four box culverts that are 210 meters long and 8 meters broad, and have a combined discharge capacity of 14,700 meters cubed per second. A 5-kilometer-long, 60-meter-high and 17-meters-cubed embankment volume concrete face rockfill saddle dam is also a part of the project. Not forgetting its power transmission, the hydroelectric facility's output will be increased to 500,000 volts and transmitted through overhead lines to 500,000-volt double bus bar switchyards situated downstream on the right bank of the river. But with all this capacity, where is the dam specifically located? The Grand Renaissance Dam is being built at a narrow part of the Blue Nile, around 15 kilometers upstream of the border between Ethiopia and Sudan, and 40 kilometers downstream of its confluence with the River Belez. The project is situated about 500 kilometers northwest of Addis Ababa, the nation's capital, in the Beni Shangul Gumas region of Ethiopia. You may think of the Renaissance Dam project as Ethiopia's road to economic revival, but there are many barriers in the way. As we all know, the Nile is the world's longest river and an essential source of water and hydropower for several nations in northern and eastern Africa. Nearly nine nations, including Burundi, Congo, Kenya, Rwanda, and Uganda, share the Nile River with Ethiopia. And now, you might be wondering, are any disputes expected to develop from this? Well, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam on the Blue Nile has recently become a source of increased hostility between Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia. This dispute is especially true after Ethiopia announced that it had begun filling the Gerds Reservoir, going against Egypt's orders that the dam not be filled until the countries involved had a binding agreement over the fair distribution of the Nile's waters. Egypt has intensified its appeal for the international community to take action. But what if an agreement is not reached and the dispute's not resolved? Let's say the United States will stop funding Ethiopia's growth. And on the other side, sadly, Egypt worries that the project will harm its water supplies. About 97% of the nation's irrigation and drinking water comes from the Nile. Sudan is now stuck between Ethiopia's and Egypt's conflicting interests. However, although Khartoum first opposed the Gerd's construction, it has now changed its mind, citing the possibility that it will enhance chances for local development. Khartoum, however, maintains its concern that the Gerd's functioning could endanger the security of Sudan's dams and make it far more challenging for the government to oversee its development projects. Nevertheless, silt will be kept in the dam. As a result, it will lengthen the useful lives of several dams, including the Aswan High Dam in Egypt and the Rosaires Senar and Mero Dams in Sudan. Moreover, the reservoir will see significantly less evaporation than downstream reservoirs like Lake Nasser in Egypt, which loses 12% of its water flow due to the water lingering in the lake for 10 months. The reservoir is located in the temperate Ethiopian highlands and can reach a depth of 140 meters. It may be possible to enhance Egypt's water supply by up to 5% by the carefully timed release of water from the reservoir downstream, and possibly Sudan's as well. If floods are instead stored in Ethiopia, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam might result in a long-term decrease in the water level in Lake Nasser. 
Thus, the existing evaporation would be decreased. However, it would also lessen the Aswan High Dam's capacity to generate energy. But if the nations can agree, the extra storage in Ethiopia can offer a strong buffer against shortages in Sudan and Egypt during the upcoming dry years. In Ethiopia, about half of the population has access to electricity, which is a lower percentage than in most other African nations, and a significantly lower percentage than in most other nations worldwide. So, wait a minute, how will the dam be beneficial to Ethiopia? Hydropower generation will be one of the dam's main advantages. The National Grid of Ethiopia will receive all the energy produced by the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam to support the entire nation's growth, including both urban and rural areas. The GERD will serve as the National Grid of Ethiopia's stabilizing backbone. Exports will occur, but only if Ethiopia generates an overall surplus of energy, which is primarily anticipated to occur during the rainy seasons when sufficient water is available for hydropower production. Additionally, the excess electricity generated by GERD that does not meet domestic demand will eventually be sold and exported to nearby stations like Sudan, Egypt, and Djibouti. So, what do you think of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam? After its full completion, do you think it will bring more economic revival to Ethiopia?